first one you're going to try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got it, yes? Okay. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Valerie Joanna Umber. Before I begin, I would like to pray. Lord, use this opportunity as I give my testimony to witness that you are in control of my life. Let the words that I speak be only what you would have me say. Let my story from death to life glorify only you, your grace, and your mercy for a sinner like me. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I'm a grateful recovering addict who was once held by amphetamines, marijuana, and needle and codependency. Now I'm a new creation through his stripes, which healed me. I am 27 years old, the youngest of three children on my mother's side, and the only child on my father's side. I was three years old when my father took custody of me from my mother. I don't remember much from that time in my life other than my father became the dad he didn't want to be. I was not planned, so my father really did not know how to be a dad to a little girl. I grew up mainly with my aunt as my mother figure, going on vacations with her and my uncle and my two cousins. My family did not attend church. We never spoke about God. We were just a family who worked to live and lived to work. My father ended up trying to find a woman to come in and take care of me in the house while he worked long hours overnights in the coal mines. My innocence as a child began to somewhat be compromised when my stepmother came into my life. For me not having a mother, all I wanted was a relationship with this new woman who my dad had married. I thought this was it. This was gonna be the woman that I would call my mom. I was so far wrong, but as a child, you don't think about the other person who is causing the abuse. You think, I am not wanted, I am not loved, and I am damaged. The abuse started quick and went from mental to viral to physical abuse. My dad worked all the time, so he never was there. My stepmom was in a dark place that me as a child couldn't understand at the time. I don't want to stay here on the subject very long. I have forgiven my stepmom, but sometimes it's hard to forget the pain and feelings of a broken little girl. But my God has given me a new name. I am loved, I am chosen, and I am worthy. I went to Summit Christian School for most of my childhood until my family decided to send me to Bagley Junior High. Upon attending Bagley, I met a girl named Adriana Hayes. I soon would find out she was my sister. Growing up, I never knew about my brother or sister. I thought it was just me and my dad. My dad told me things like my mother had given me up and didn't want to see me. As I met this girl for the first time, she told me, I am your sister. My first thought was, no, you're not. You're mixed and I'm white. And she began to tell me that my mother didn't give me up, give me up and that she didn't give up on my brother and my sister until she lost me. My mother, that's all I could think. My mom, who left me with my father. She told me she was going to tell my mother about me and she gave me her phone number. I went home from school that day and I asked my dad about my mom and my siblings. The only thing he would respond to me was, the grass is not greener on the other side of the field. That night I contacted my sister on my father's phone while he was asleep. I ran away from home that night at the age of 16. My sister came and picked me up and took me literally five minutes down the road from my father's house to Sayre, Alabama. I met my mother, my brother, and my mom's side of the family. That night, I tried a new kind of monster I knew nothing about, which was, which was amphetamines. I didn't know what it was, I just did it in hopes to gain the approval of my mother and my siblings I had longed for all my childhood. The beast had entered my life. I was a runaway, so of course I didn't attend school anymore. I began to smoke meth frequently, pop pills, smoke weed, and seek attention from any boy that came around. I ended up pregnant with my first son, Adkin, in the year of 2012. I was terrified. I was a runaway, I couldn't go to the doctor, and I was already addicted to drugs, I didn't even realize it. I ended up getting caught by the authorities who ran my name, and it came back a runaway. I went back to my father's house, only to leave again. I ended up having Adkin and losing him when I caught my first possession charge in Summerton, Alabama. My stepmom and my dad came and picked up Adkin, and they have had him ever since. He is the oldest of my children, he is legally adopted by my dad and my stepmother. My addiction had its grip on me. I ended up starting to have sex with whatever boy showed me attention and rob you and lie to you, manipulate you and do whatever I could to get my fix. I was stuck in full-blown addiction. I wish I could tell you that my father reached out to me in my addiction to help me back onto the path of freedom or that my mom seen me destroying my life at a young age, that she sent me to get help, but that wasn't the case for me. I was alone with no parents to help me correct my wrongs. I ended up catching many charges and felonies in my drug abuse. I was sent to prison at a very young age at the age of 18. 
By Coleman County, you would think that would be my wake-up call, but not me. My pride, my mentality all around had me fooled. I thought I was just bad at the bone. Nobody in the streets would mess with a thug like me. I became someone I didn't even recognize. I knew what I was doing was wrong. I knew I was so much more than what I was doing. I had been to rehab at the Love Lady fresh out of prison, only to leave again. I ended up pregnant with my second child in 2016, Anna Ruby, who I also lost due to my drug abuse. I had my third child in 2018, Joseph Malachi, while I was a state inmate, chained to a bed in Tuckwiler Prison for Women. I got to spend less than 24 hours with my son before he was ripped from me. I had my youngest and last child in 2019 and my own miracle. I also lost her due to my drug abuse. I hit my rock bottom when I found out that the federal marshals were investigating me for some guns that came up missing out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I ended up getting busted in Walker County, Alabama in a huge drug bust. As I was sitting in jail, lost, broken, and about to bond out, scared for, scared for my life, a woman told me about a rehab called City of Lights in Doyle, Alabama. I reached out to the center and was answered by this woman named Christy who told me to come straight there. I came to City of Lights November 14, 2020. <coughs> Coming to rehab, I didn't know what to expect. I had been to jail, rehab, etc., and I just couldn't stop using. I thought I was too far gone. Since being here at City of Lights, I have found freedom. It wasn't easy, it was a process, but it has shown me that I was never alone. My God fights for me. Amen. He called me out of the darkness for such a time as this. I have worked my coursework and dug it into the breaking away of myself that I should have done a long time ago. In the process of my recovery here, I was offered five years straight in DOC State Prison. My God is bigger. Instead of the prison sentence, I received eight years, split three years, supervised probation. Just this past week, I went to Tuscaloosa County and was explained to, explained to myself about the point system of mandatory prison time. With all my felonies and priors, I had received 14 points in the point system in the state of Alabama, which means I was one point shy away from 15 from a mandatory prison sentence. And my mandatory sentence would have ran five years straight. I received three years probation, ran concurrent with the probation I'm already on. The number three sticks out to me because three biblically represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Reminding me that even in my surrendering and obedience and my recovery, my consequences were still there. But I am never alone. The blessings in my recovery just came along with it. I now have my high school diploma and was able to graduate Bevel State with a nursing assistant certificate. I now have went to court for my children, and I am in the process of mending the broken relationships with my children, my father, and my stepmother. I have obtained my driver's license back and purchased my first legal vehicle with insurance. For addicts, that's a big deal. I am now seeking a position in the recovery field to let women know that his steadfast love endures forever. If we just surrender ourselves, our plans, and our agenda to Him, and let Him guide us, He will prevail. <clears throat> I have found for myself that clean time and time in general didn't heal my brokenness or my addiction. That the only one who did was my Jesus. Amen. And He could do the same for you. Amen. I want to thank the staff at City Lights for speaking life over me when I needed it the most. For understanding me and pushing me to become the best version of myself that I can be. For giving me the opportunity to further my career with helping women as they help us. I want to thank them for sacrificing their wants for our needs. Amen. I want to thank Short Creek for trusting me to come and share my testimony of hope to you tonight. And thank you to Ron and Marilyn for the love that Short Creek pours into us at the City of Lots. I want to share a few verses with you. Psalms 18, 2 through 6. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Right. Romans 5, 3 through 5. We also glory in our sufferings, because everybody knows recovery is not easy. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. Right. And hope is not put to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Yeah. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not live, love their lives to the death. 
And the last and final one, Isaiah 61, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. In closing, I want to say a prayer I heard over you tonight. Okay. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for, for, for revival, a restoration of faith. I pray that the dead would come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. special prayer or anything. Seth's going to sing some songs and I just want you to know these altars are open. We'll pray yeah. with you. We'll, we'll go to war on your behalf. Yes. We will charge the gates of hell with a squirt yes. gun on your behalf. So y'all just uh, stand up and worship. If you want prayer, come to these altars.